again, you're not def you're not defending the the actual format of telling the story. You're just saying it's a story. Get over it. I'm like, I'm there for the story. I want the story. I mean, I... then embrace the story. Yeah, yeah but when the, the cutscenes only seem to be used when they need look, when the look, plot requires look. Adam to do something stupid that a player would never deliberately do. It's like, let me let this bad guy get away when I could have easily shot him in the face. <laughs> as soon as this discussion starts, you're going to make no sense whatsoever. That seems like a very likely possibility. Um, so... <sighs> What we were talking about, Dead Space, Callum, old body, old pal of mine. Talking, raging, one of those. Well, I've been, I've been talking. I've been trying to defend it, and you've been brutally murdering it. I've been lambasting it with an endless diatribe based on logical fallacies and references to the Bible, you know. Mm. <laughs> In, in, in all seriousness, I'm quite confused where this all started. But um, well, I shall scroll up until we hit the crux. Uh, um. Oh yes, this started as a discussion as to why you seem to hate when AAA games put story. It's not into their games. It's and not. Oh. Oh, I'll let you finish. Why you seem to hate story games. I'm going to let you they finish. The Snake Eater step. is one of the best games of all time. All yeah, time. Yeah, but you like it not because of its story, but because of what Actually, it lets you do. That's not true at all. I've said It's several not true at all. That's, no. that's the vibe I get whenever you talk about it. Oh, you you like the characters. The you, like, you like the way it plays. You like what it lets you do. But I've never once heard you talk about the story. So that really surprises me, especially since I could have sworn I sent you the script for my Snake Eater review, where it talks about the yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, you sent me the review, but I don't think anywhere in it was anything to do with the story. It was mostly to do with characters and but other stuff. It's got nothing to do with the story, it was all to do with characters. Well, characters and story, you can kind of... They're kind of separate to each other. I mean, Car they work well, together, but they are separate to each other. This is getting slightly, slightly tangenty, but my point was, <laughs> I have my problem with, with Snake Eater's story, but it it definitely has a wonderful story, I also think. But should we try and keep this on Dead Space, shall we? Alright, alright, we'll try and keep it on Dead Space. It's just that's where we started. Everything and then you started to insult Isaac. The world and then you begins and ends with Snake Eater. Dead Space this is true. Uh, but should we establish... I played Dead Space 1. I quite enjoyed Dead Space 1. Did you enjoy Dead Space how. 1? Yes? <laughs> no? I don't know how, to be honest. You the amount know? of oh. complaints you had with it. And then suddenly you, you turned around a complete 180 and said, oh no, you know, it's alright. Well, that's it's fine. A, that's actually one of my things, is it seems like so long since I played the original now, that when I played Dead Space 2 a, a little while ago, I was kind of thinking, Jesus, I don't remember finding so many little things annoying me in the first one. Do I Have I just yeah. kind of burned out on Dead Space, or is this actually annoying me significantly more than the first one? I actually want to go back and play the first one again now, because I'm not sure... Yeah. Kind of strange. I it, I didn't play it long enough ago to get nostalgia or anything. So, and it wasn't a game. I you know I was never like, oh, I love it so much. But I was like, this this is generally consistently enjoyable. It's got some stupid bits, but mm. yeah. You see, for me, I think the games have gotten better as the series has gone on. Mm. Mainly because they have added more story, and I am a sucker for story. Okay. So, you realise that story and the means of conveying the story can be two different things. Yeah, they can. Such as, I really like a lot of the story of Snake Eater, but there are definitely times when I wish they'd stop having all the exposition lead in the codec cutscenes and such. And, similarly, just recently I played a very, very, very small amount. These are purely first impressions. 
So no, cruci no crucifying me, please. But I played a very small amount of GTA V. I played the first couple of missions, and I yeah. found them incredibly you seem to hate obnoxious. That as well, don't you? Yes, the it's it. I hate when there seems to be a real trend in the AAA scene of late where they will be like, "Look at all the story we have. Let us let me constantly interrupt you enjoying the game so I can show you." This cutscene when we could have just put the story in the game, but no, it has to be wrenched away from your, your controller and be like, oh, look at this, look at this. Uh, classic example would be, in an otherwise lovely game, would be Human Revolution, the opening, where it's like, no, let me show you around this factory. Would you like to look around the factory? Well, we won't let you. You're on, a, you're on an on rails segment. You know, it's just <laughs> obnoxious. Yeah, but I see that those points. They kind, of, they don't really work because they're oh. these scenes, especially the Human Revolution opening. They are to set up the story. They are to set up the state that your characters are going to be in for the rest of the game, and they are to set up, you know, the story. Like oh. what? What is the story about? Yeah, I'm agreeing. So I'm agreeing. it stands to reason that you're going to be on rails for the beginning. No. As soon as you're out of that beginning bit, you are pretty much let loose. I, I strongly disagree. There's no reason why that factory sequence had to be on rails that I can figure out. My only, my only explanation is that they had so many characters walking around that they somehow couldn't make it interactive in the usual sense. Because it's in... And it, there aren't that many, I mean, or maybe not, maybe I'm completely imagining this, but it just seems well, like... I, th mm. I think that you're annoyed that it isn't like the original Deus Ex, in which that game literally let you straight out of the gate do whatever you want. I mean, it did have a separate tutorial level where it was very linear, but it did have a lot of crazy mechanics to introduce as well. Yeah. Because human, human Revolution is a very toned down version of Deus Ex. In some ways. But it introduces more story because of it. I mean, Which is what a lot of AAA games seem to be going for these days. Toned down gameplay, pumping up the story. Which a lot of people did, I believe, did want. It's, it's not... It, yeah, but you seem to be equating... It's not really about pumping up the story, it's about pumping up the obnoxious way in which the story is forced upon you, in a way. Here's the thing, in the opening to Human Revolution, I would have followed what's-her-name Megan around, and I would have listened to all the conversations, but if I didn't want to, and if it hadn't been, in, if it had been an interactive segment and I didn't want to listen to them, I could have just run ahead and maybe they could have had a little joke, like if you... There's a great moment where if you just bugger around in the office for 10 minutes, your boss rings you up and complains that now a bunch of people have been killed because you took so long farting around in the office. It's a nice little fun moment. But at the beginning of the game, they give you no option. I don't understand. People... It's like, it's like I said, they are setting up a story. If you miss the beginning, then you're not going to know what on earth is going on. If you miss the beginning, on. it's because you didn't care to listen to the story and won't appreciate you, having it forced upon you. What's the point playing the game for the story, then? You might as well just be playing well, an open world game. That's what I'm saying, is if, if people... So exactly. Deus Ex Human Revolution is a story-focused game. Okay? Generally, I'd agree. So is Dead Space 2. Less so, but... Less so, but it is still there, uh, and it's still forcing you confusing to, to you know, experience the story in the way that the developers have wanted you to ex yeah, experience it. Forcing, yes. Whether you like that or not is up to you, but this, that is what the game is there for, yeah. in this my is, opinion. It's kind of turning into more of a discussion about the opening of Human Revolution, but... <laughs> <laughs> but you don't... I'm, I don't... My point is... It just seems so silly so often that all this effort they go, and like in GTA 5, in those opening missions, all those little intrusive cutscenes that must have required hours and hours of putting in there, it, I find it much more intrusive and obnoxious and frustrating and immersion destroying to constantly, he's like, walk through that door, I walk forward two steps, and then there's another little cutscene that goes on ten seconds, and it's like, point your gun at that guy, and then I do that for two seconds, there's another cutscene, it's just like, why I do it? feel as though they could have handled the beginning of GTA V a bit better. Oh, but again, oh. it's within that reign of it is setting up where these characters are, what these characters 
may be doing and you know what the rest of the world is like to your characters yeah but why does that require you to pull the control away why can't they... I don't know again again I, I have no idea why they did it the way they this, did it this is my criticism. they could have they could have probably just had one cutscene oh. and then let you get on with it which I would have much preferred yeah and again, I mean as the, as oh. the game goes on those cutscenes if you are enjoying the story, those cutscenes, they're nice. They provide a little bonus because you get to see bits of your character which you can fall in love with. Oh. But again, you need, you're going to need to play more of it before yeah, you can yeah, yeah. go into that. I don't want to go into GTA Five just because that's so close Yeah, we, w- we won't go any further into GTA Five. I mean, you know, I could complain. It, all it's all kind of a, a special case because I do feel as though they could, they could have done it a bit better. Oh. But, you know. Was that too extreme for you then? Do you think Dead Space 2 interrupting was fine? But GTA 5. Well, Dead Space 2 interrupting is fine because it only does it to show you the mental effects of what your character is experiencing. But why is it necessary to wrench the control away? It needs to, because it's necessary for the story, for the plot. It's like why? <laughs> when we were talking about the final boss. Which should we? I don't and know. You said what, it was tedious. And you said oh. you wish you had more control when you were shooting that one guy with the bolt gun, right? I'm the reason quite, it's set yes. up like that is purely because that is what this—that is what Isaac is is going through. His his mental condition isn't very good, which is why the final boss fight is the way it is. It also sh- the final boss fight is also. It shows you that Isaac is finally defeating his inner demons and getting rid of the past bad stuff. That was pretty much the incredibly unsubtle interpretation I took, yes. Yeah. So it is, it's, it's a good way of doing it, even if you didn't like it. Uh, hmm. On a purely story way. I, I still feel like you are equating story as if it has this set formula of delivery a lot of these times. Like, story, uh, can, story can happen in any way it wants to. It's just what the developers have chosen to actually end up in that game is the way that it will go down because it, it's prob- possibly the best way of doing it. Well, you, did you just say that the story happens the way it is because that's the way it was made. Which is like the most well, <laughs> yes statement in the okay, world. Okay, let me think. The story <laughs> happens in Dead Sp- oh. oh god. Oh god. You back? Oh, oh you're back. Okay. Something strange right. happened. The what? story happens the way it does is because that is the way the developers have th- thought this is the optimal way of showing the progression of this particular bit of the story. More like telling, but yes. Okay. Which is why it is what it is. Well, yeah, I, I presumed they did it that way because they thought it was a good idea rather than just because they could. But yeah. I often in these AAA games completely disagree that that's the good way to go about it because it just which is why I brought up the point that perhaps you just don't really care much about the story it's which is why just... it's easy for you to complain it... about things like cutscenes and bad boss fights what? and failing game mechani- mechanics no, because I, I... you don't seem to care much well I would say that Dead Space's story has kind of like had two whole games to become interesting and has yet to really. I mean, I mean. Well, uh, let's be fair. You haven't played Dead Space Three I, in this uh, True, scenario. true. But like, this is the thing about Dead Space. It's kind of like it. Well, I mean, okay. First of all, Dead Space One got off to a very bad start by having the most. It, uh, I'm not usually the person who sees plot twists coming a mile away. I'm usually very easy to lull along into the experience, and only in, on reflection, you go, that was really obvious. But I completely and utterly I do not consider this a spoiler from the first second that I saw that oh look at me I'm a wife and I'm on this mysterious abandoned ship I'm like she's dead she's dead isn't she she's dead she's dead yeah. 
It's not really no character. Spoiler. I mean, I think I think pretty much everyone assumes that the first time they see the wife. To be honest, it's not that much of a ooh, is she alive? Isn't she alive? But again, I think Dead Space One compared to Dead Space Two, they were made very differently. Weird, I think Dead Space, Dead Space 1, they tried to go for a more survival horror kind of thing set in space. And the story was kind of an afterthought. Whereas Dead Space 2, they took the character of Isaac and thought, well, what can we do with this mentally unstable character now? You know, So they gave him a voice, they gave him a face, and they gave him a story. And then they just added gameplay to that. You see, that's interesting... Because I, maybe you're right, maybe for the second game they were actually trying harder to have a story, because, you know, the first one especially is pretty, you know, straightforward, mysterious ship where something has gone horribly wrong. That's incredibly standard system shock sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but I, again, I wouldn't say even that Dead Space 1 is a particularly great example. System shock did its predictable story better than Dead Space did, I think. But I, I I had a much more logical sense of progressing through the place. You were literally going from one end of the ship to the other, and things got, you know, shit got increasingly real the further you went along. Whereas in the second one, I never had almost any feeling of... A, it just felt like we were going around in a random direction with only the vaguest goal of find this guy who's evil because the game tells me he is. And and it didn't even have the unintentional hilarity that the first game had with the, the uh, Tommy Wiseau villain. That that really was by far my, the most entertaining part of that story. Just my my eyes lit up every time he appeared on the little codec and started talking. And you cannot resist the will of God, Lisa. You're tearing me apart, Isaac. Uh, and other bad impressions. What what was your original point? No, uh, I forgot I don't know. entirely. <sighs> I'm sorry for not being able to have a coherent thought in my life. You see, this is the problem. I'm trying to make points and you make me forget them. That's probably entirely valid, but... <sighs> okay, okay, okay. I said... I thought Dead Space 1 had better storytelling methods. So even if Dead Space 2 was the game where they were actually trying to have a story... That was slightly less predictable. I thought the fact that they ran in all those intrusive cutscenes and Isaac taking his helmet off constantly for no reason, just to... If I was in a situation where horrible, crawling, space zombie mutant things, whatever they were, were everywhere and eating people, I would, under no circumstances, take my helmet off. And he doesn't need to take his helmet off to talk to people. So, it just... I was just waiting for something to jump on him in a cutscene when I couldn't stop it happening. Like in Human Revolution. It keeps coming back to Human Revolution. The, those damn cutscenes. It was really obnoxious in... in That's a really long, annoying title to say, Human Revolution, over and over again. Deus Ex 3. Yeah, Deus Ex. <laughs> Whatever. Or HR. In HR. Or the new one. In HR, that one. Yeah. Um... It was so weird because the whole game was spent being like, look at all these choices you can have. And apart from that obnoxious intro, you can just wander around and talk to people whoever you like. And now here come along these cutscenes where Adam acts like a complete idiot and you have no control over it. And I had that similar feeling constantly in Deus Ex 2. Not Deus Oh, God damn, we're getting them mixed up now. Dead Space 2. <laughs> <laughs> they have the same letter at the beginning of their Deus name. Deus Ex 2, that, yeah. Ah, uh, you know, Dead Space 2 and Visible uh, War. Look, look, look. What? You're bringing up the same points for different games, so I'm going to do the same thing. Oh. The reason that Deus Ex HR has those cutscenes is because it is a story-driven game, whether you like it or not. What? So you will take that story and what? you will appreciate it. Again, you're not def you're not defending the the actual format of telling the story. You're just saying it's a story. Get over it. I'm like <laughs> I'm there for the story. I want the story. I mean, I... then embrace the story. Yeah, yeah but when the, the cutscenes only seem to be used when they need look, when the look, plot requires look. Adam to do something stupid that a player would never deliberately do. It's like let me let this bad guy get away when I could have easily shot him in the face. 
It's just so arbitrary. Would you, prefer, would you prefer the way that, say, Skyrim does story? No cutscenes whatsoever. They just let you run around, do whatever, whatever you want. You can skip through dialogue trees. You can not really care much, but you can still get the general gist of things. I don't think Skyrim is as good an example as the original Deus Ex, but generally, yes. Because to me, that sounds awful. <laughs> well, that, that pretty much is what Human Revolution is 90% of the time. It's just that opening and those cutscenes which annoy me. It's the cutscenes so that like it. Because it's like, here what? is your character. You've brought them to this point, and this is what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah but... Uh, wait. Because at the end what? of the day, you're playing a character. The character isn't you. Uh, that is it's always... the character's decision in those cutscenes to do what they do, not yours. That's true. Especially in a game like HR, that is a, a prequel to the other Deus Ex games. Well, if the character <laughs> doesn't do those things, then a lot of stuff in the original Deus Ex probably won't make much sense. I don't think that's a great argument, since there are plenty of other things in the Human Revolution story that don't make an awful lot of sense as a prequel to the original game. Not to mention the multiple endings, but... If you do this, something bad will happen. Are you sure you want to do this? I swear that lady was meant to sound like the derpiest... It sounds like she's just come out of major surgery, is how that lady sounds. Anyway. <laughs> tangent, possibly. Hmm. Uh, God. Uh, but that is a very interesting, if we're going to embrace that other tangent you brought up, that um, the whole debate of, it's a game, so you're interacting, but it's not a blank slate, because it actually has a character. I wouldn't say Adam Jensen is a massively deep character. Above average, but... Well, you know, he has that one thing going for him, which is spoilers, which we won't reveal. Oh. But other than that, he's fairly one-dimensional. He's got that one thing, that really big thing, that makes him a character, but we won't talk about it. Yeah. Of course, well, it, it, it's because this is, a, this is a prequel game. You can't really say much. It's to do with characters and stuff. Oh. Oh, do I'm you remember the what? thing? What? Do you remember the thing? Is it to do with the, the, the predictable... Damsel in Distress introduced at the beginning. Or... No, no. Well, well maybe sort I of, don't but no, not really. <laughs> Let's move on. What was your? Yeah. <laughs> you pick the topic. Uh, another topic. Why don't you pay attention? Explain. That's, that's a good topic. Well, I will say that Dead Space Two kind of forces you to see its story constantly, which ironically makes me less interested in it. Mm. I'm like, I wonder what this thing over here is. Now to force you to look at the thing. It's kind of arbitrary human nature, I suppose, when they're trying to make you do something. You're like, well, no, I don't care. <laughs> but, uh... That is, I, was, I was getting on to that earlier, was the whole idea that one of the beautiful things about the original Deus Ex is it largely lets you experience as much story as you care to. You can just run and gun, pretty much, as you want, and then skip all... Whatever conversations you bump into, you can easily skip. Yeah. With little Which is fine. It's fine to do that. Yes, as I'm long saying. As it it's has. good. Yeah, it's fine to do that in the context of one game that has no real consequence over others. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it is a very good design philosophy that a lot of games can learn from. Because I know, I know that the main reason why people didn't like the second Deus Ex was because it didn't really take many people's choices into account. It had one canon ending that they took from the original Deus Ex, oh, yeah, and they rolled with that. Terrible idea. Yeah. You, know, you know those three awesome and equally valid endings that kind of defied the usual predictable good, bad, and obviously not canon endings that games tend to give you? Let's just pick one of those and completely mm. destroy the original point of the endings. And, I don't know, I still really should, actually play more than an hour of Invisible War, because apparently it gets better, despite that really was one of the most monstrously terrible first impressions I've ever had to a game, though. It was like they systematically sat down and said, you know all those cool things, let's ruin those. And uh, a bit, bit like Guns fun. and Patriots, actually. <laughs> 
Well, Guns of the Patriots is an extreme view of how not to do story. Uh, can we? Can we just like scouts on agree on that here and there? Mm. Can we do an internet handshake? Yes, we agree that Guns of the Patriots is a glowing guide on how not to tell a story. <laughs> And this is oh, coming man. from the guy, you know, big Snake Eater fan, but Jesus Christ, too many cutscenes. No, um, but when you make Snake Eater look like it has about five minutes of cutscenes by comparison, that's when something had gone terribly wrong with your story. Oh god, oh god, more connection issues. <sighs> so, uh, how are you doing, listener? Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Filling time while Callum hopefully reconnects before too long. Otherwise, I'll probably cut this because. God damn it, you've got bad things to do with your time. Oh, hello! Hello! <laughs> I was amusing the audience while you reconnected. Is there anybody there? No. Oh, God. <laughs> You're all alone on a spaceship Apparently with mutant well, zombies. It's amazing that, right, how through all of our D&D sessions we haven't had a single connection failure. Yes. We do it like a 20 minute thing here and suddenly we've had two in a row. <laughs> well, actually, it's been nothing but rain this last week and I'm suspicious it's doing something to something internet related around here because I swear it's as soon as this ridiculous rain season started that the internet has been randomly going out for me, but... I'm such an, a technical expert, as you know. So, uh, what are we talking about? Do you I don't want? Know, you, were, you were saying something. Uh, <laughs> how about? I have no idea what I'm going to probably call this video anymore because it was originally meant to be about Dead Space, and then we talked about uh, everything else I for think twenty it's minutes. More to do with the way that that, that people tell their stories than anything. Yes. That's exactly my original issue. It's the, it's the way it's, that they intrusively. The yes. Yeah. You 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 yeah okay. There are definitely good ways and there are definitely wrong ways. Well, some of the good ways you don't seem to like. Some of the good ways what, I love. What? Some of the I bad mean, ways we we don't like. We don't like here. Fuck off, MGS4. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind, of, that's kind of an arbitrary labelling. These are the good ways that I agree with, and if you don't agree with them, then that's because you're wrong. <laughs> well, it's not because you're wrong, it's just because you have differing opinions, which are all perfectly so, valid. So these just... things are factually good, and you not Ooh, liking them means yeah, your opinion is wrong. It is a good way of showing you the story. In your if opinion. If the cutscene happens, if the cutscene goes on for too long, it suddenly becomes a bad way, but if the cutscene is just right, and gives you the perfect amount of information for you to progress, and there's nothing but, wrong with it. What, what I'm trying, one of my things is, I'm saying that so often cutscenes are unnecessary. It's like, let me force feed you this information that you may have wanted to pay attention to anyway, but if you didn't want to pay attention to it, now you're being forced to endure it, and if you do want to pay attention to it, you might still feel kind of like, well, I would have paid attention to that anyway, so now why are you wrenching me out of the experience to show me something I would have cared about anyway. Which is what I was saying, like, you play Half-Life, and there are so many, like, little scripted background events you can completely ignore, because they, they aren't forced upon you. I mean, some of the conversations you can't walk past until they open a door for you, which I think uh, Call of Duty took a bit too much influence from years later, but... Again, I think Deus Ex is even a better example than Half-Life a lot of time, but... One thing, you know, way more story in Days Next than Half-Life. Yeah, but again, all of this comes down to what kind of a game you prefer to play. Mm. You prefer to play an open world game in which you can run around... It doesn't, it doesn't really have to be open world. You don't want to. It doesn't have but to no, be open does, world. Because if it isn't, then it's just a linear thing which forces you to enjoy the story. I think you are... That is usually the way that, 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 that non-open world games go. It's true. It's true. It's not about linearity, though. It's not. There is linear because. Sex is fairly linear. Well, compared to Skyrim, sure, but it's got it's got. Yeah. It's, I think okay. I think we are missing something here. You, you're talking about linearity here, and I'm not I'm one saying, of those people. I'm saying linear oh. games always include some form of story 
in some form of way. Yes, but it doesn't always have to experience. But it doesn't that. have to be. Or not. It doesn't have to be. In your... open world, you can choose to just skip it entirely and not care as much. Yeah, but okay, we're narrowing in on the, my point here. It's not a, necessarily about linearity. There's linearity. And then there's, like, giving you absolutely no room to do anything to the point where you barely feel like you're playing a game. A very extreme example would be something like the single player in the Battlefield 3, which is just notorious for barely needing you to be there at all. The, the game just plays itself while you have an invincible turret section. But that was... But, oh god, where's it going with this? But I'm not saying, I'm not saying like, oh, Dead Space is fun, but it would be so much better if it was an open world where you could just walk around all the zombies. No, what you're saying is it would be better if the way that they told the story was less, I guess, intrusive. Yes. And you, you seem to think that's necessary, that it intrudes. It's, it's, it's fine the way they've done it. Explain. It's like I said, because of the nature of the character Isaac and what he has... He has a character? <laughs> he is the most... It was amazing how bland yeah, some of his dialogue was. think of the character. This is, what I'm, this is what I see when I play Dead Space 2. Go on, go on, okay? go on. Yep, yep, yep. Right. So because of the nature of what happened to Isaac in Dead Space 1, he is now a fucked up piece <laughs> of meat, just walking around, not really understanding what's going on. Okay? Uh -huh. His mind is completely balked, which is why a lot of these cutscenes have to do with him taking off of his helmet and being assaulted by his dead girlfriend. Oh, the connection is going mind, a bit, isn't it? His mind is playing tricks on him. And a lot of that has to do with the markers. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I get for what they're going for, there probably would have needed to be some sort of scripted bits, but... My issue was, especially near the start, it just felt like you go into a room now to take your helmet off and just talk to your dead girlfriend. I don't consider that a spoiler again. That <laughs> she's dead. That's the most happens a lot. signposted well, thing. If you haven't played Dead Space 1, what on earth are you doing playing Dead Space 2? Well, that is actually a very good point, although I would have said, you know, not necessarily people would have... I was thinking more of people listening to this, but well, whatever, whatever. I'll put a blanket oh, spoiler warning. Uh, um, what the? What the? No. I. You know what I just thought. Mm -hmm. A game. A game that I, I'm not without some issues with, but I thought it did much more interesting things with like madness and storytelling in general than Dead Space Two was Amnesia. Right. I think Amnesia was much more subtle about. Again, I don't want to go into spoilers, but it kind of plays with your assumptions of what your protagonist is going to turn out to be. You kind of assume he's just this guy, and then actually the further on you go through the game, you get some hints that actually something's going on. And then there's kind of the one big scene where things it's just it goes from a bit iffy to, okay, now I don't think I can assume anyone's going to be a nice guy. That is actually... A very interesting point about Amnesia. There aren't many characters, but all of them are kind of dicks to some extent. You know? Like, yeah. even the main villain who sounds like he could have been Darth Vader in an alternate universe or something, even he has a hint of some sort of justification for what he's doing, but... Okay, this is definitely a tangent now, but my point yeah, was... This is, this is a massive tangent. My point was... I felt the way Amnesia did a similar crazy madness thing was much more interesting and generally less obnoxious than what Dead Space 2 was doing. Right. Okay, I've just done a little search. Oh. Let's find out how many cutscenes are in Dead Space 2. Right. Okay. I also found out how many are in Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 3. Wait, what? Oh, how many, right? Right. There are more cutscenes in Dead Space 1 than there are in Dead Space 2, but there are more cutscenes in Dead Space 3 overall. That really surprises me. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's been a while since I played the first. This is what I was saying, was when I played number 2, it kind of made me go, I don't remember finding so many annoying things in the first one. I remember 
I remember it being a, you know, generally coherently pleasant experience, give or take a few boring boss fights. And of course you seem to think me saying boss fights are boring means they must be really hard and annoying. No, I thought they were boring, they were easy. <laughs> well, I only thought that because, you know, what's wrong with you? Why don't you like boss fights? I don't like the Dead Space boss fights. Oh, I think I keep, Dead Space boss fights, they're fine. I keep talking about Snake Eater. Snake Eater has like two of the best Snake boss Eater fights has ever. Ridiculous boss fights. They're amazing. <laughs> oh, Dead Space isn't ridiculous. If you compare Dead Space, if you compare Dead Space boss fights to Snake Eater boss fights, Snake Eater boss fights are probably going to be a bit more interesting. <laughs> yes. Some of them are just a bit out there. They don't really work. If you logically think about it. Snake Eater. It's in Dead Space. You're trying to bring logic into Snake Eater, that's the main problem. Well, exactly. The very <laughs> fact that you try to bring logic into Snake Eater doesn't really make sense. So to compare then Dead Space <laughs> to Snake Eater doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. I really don't think Dead Space is a particularly grounded in reality game. But... No, but it tries to be in, in some Does it? form of way. Well, maybe. It doesn't have a man shooting bees. No, it doesn't have like a hundred year old sniper. Who's photosynthetic. Who's photosynthetic. And talks to his parrot. Have, it does have <laughs> dead things and it's all in space. It does have space scientologists, which is scarily yeah. plausible. No, the unitologists. Ooh. Space Ooh. scientologists. Space <laughs> time tolly unitologists. I, I did, I, actually, yes, there was only one moment I remember in Dead Space right. 2 where I actually definitely connected with Isaac as a character was... This isn't a spoiler, it's a very early bit where you have to go... For some reason, you have to go through a unitology temple place in order okay, to get again, somewhere. If you had paid attention to any of the story that was happening, you would understand why you were going through no, I'm, no, I'm no. saying, I'm saying, I'm sure they explained at the time, I'm just saying... It yeah, seems like a strange it, design. Pay attention, go on. When, uh, well, I get some of these details. Uh, it was just ages ago, but for whatever reason, you have to go through a unitology temple, and Isaac says to the person, "Really, this seems like the worst place in the world I could be going in the middle of a horrible zombie outbreak." And I'm like, "Yes, well put, Isaac." That was like my one moment. I remember thinking, "Yes, me and Isaac are on the same level here," <laughs> you know. Mm. Almost every other time, somewhat, he was almost so bland to the point where he ceased to be relatable because no human being is actually that generic. Hmm. Well, you know, I didn't find him that generic, but he has like that's just me. I could like with my eyes. Almost everything he said was just like. Your character walks into this situation, what's the first thing you think of to write as their dialogue? Boom, there we go. Oh, it's like, oh my god, a thing happened to me. Oh no, holy shit. That's like, just brain on the page was his dialogue. Is that, is how it, I don't know what that even means, but that, that was how I interpreted it. Mm. As someone who really, really, have you ever met one of those people who just seems to talk in cliches and be like, Oh, I was... Oh, finding a job in this city is like a needle in a haystack. I should probably go over to that dark castle on that dark stormy night. Okay, this is terrible. I can't make up an example, but... There are some yeah. people who just seem to, like, talk in the most bland language they could possibly have. And that's mm. how I felt that Isaac talked. <sighs> he was more relatable when he was just a completely blank slate, like in the first game. If you're going to try and give him a character, actually give him a character, don't just make him say, like, pointless things. Like, oh no, a zombie, I should kill it. Holy shit. He actually swore a lot, but in a kind of not funny... You know, people who swear in a deliberately timed way, it works. But he just kind of swore... It's like how in Jack 2 everyone swears, because it's gritty and dark and angsty. That's, uh, it was not a flattering comparison that I made. I'm going to stop playing with this paper I have here because it's probably making horrible rustling noises. If I keep bashing into my mic, I'm surprised you haven't been hearing it. i just move it over there. There we go. I'm losing um, my hearing in my old age. For instance, every time you talk, all I hear is this kind of whiny, staticky noise. 
Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> when you talk, all I hear is cats mewing. I'm disappointed that no cats have interrupted this, this recording. Well, you know, you're a destructive influence on us all, here, and we've got to we've got to shut your mouth every once in a while. How about you bring this conversation back to something resembling the original topic? Oh. All right, all right. So, Kieran. Yes. Knowing what you believe you think you know about Dead Space 1 and 2, what do you think they've done with Dead Space 3? Well, I can t I'm kind of getting that lost feeling from Dead Space at this point, where it's like... I mean, lo uh, not quite, but you know, you know how Lost was, it was like, oh, here's this interesting mystery, I wonder what the answer is, and then, like, six series later, the answer was not remotely worth waiting for. I'm I shall remind you, I watched through Lost twice, back to back. Why would it you... very intriguing. I'm probably the only person in the world that does. But, yeah. Apparently, so this is the problem right here, I'm talking to the one person who thought that Lost had a good ending. <laughs> I think it fitted. Again, if the story fits, I'm fine with it. Yeah, but, oh, this keeps coming back to the whole... If the story fits... It's know. not... It, the, the story and how the story is told are two crucially different things. Yes, and if they both are fine, then I don't see the problem. No, no, but the, it's when not you that... Start complaining about things, I'm complaining because I don't think one of them is... I'm complaining, the problem but you said if they're both fine, then there's no problem. But what I'm saying is that they're not both fine because the me no, means no, of which. You, they're not both that, yes, that's what I'm saying. For me, they are fine. Oh my god, this I is like. like what they yes, do. yes, I know that you like it. I'm saying I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not saying everyone hates it. I'm saying I don't like it. Yeah, I know, but you are an oddball. You're what? weird. You hate things ah, sometimes. Ah. I think. Just because you hate things. Is that a pathetic fallacy I'm hearing there, for Lady Beetle? Maybe. Maybe I'm just getting annoyed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what you said, so long as both of them are fine, there's no problem. I agree, and remember, I love Snake Eater, even though I do have some great problems with some of how the story is told. I have some huge problems with the way the story is told. Yes, it, it, in the opening in particular does not set a good first impression. Mm. But Snake Eater had way more story to tell than Dead Space too. I think, for I one thing. I think it did. It had the man with bees. Also, yeah, that's, Mr... That's... Have you even played Snake Eater? <laughs> no, but I've seen it. Do you it's even know this? It's games where I have no interest in playing because it just seems a bit too disjointed and out there. So I just watched it all. And what I saw, you know, it was oh. what I thought it was. Well, it's, it's kind of hard with Snake Eater to say that you don't get the same experience by watching it than you would playing it, because you, you kind of do, because most of the story is told very... There is often a very fine line between the story and the gameplay in Snake Eater, it is very true, but... Those rare moments when it does actually intermingle are quite interesting, like... Oh, I don't want to give a spoiler, but there's a certain boss whose boss... There's a certain boss whose life meter is empty, and for some reason that simple little touch I just love. And if you know who it is, you know exactly what I mean, if, if, and if you don't, that will mean nothing to you. So I don't consider that a spoiler. <laughs> what am I talking about, but... I don't know, your ever-loving fascination with a game that I don't see any point of. You know what I think? I think that we're just two completely different individuals who should never play games together ever again. Well, Unless that's we fine, fine. Fist fine, I'll cancel the wedding then. Yeah. <sighs> I'll hand back the rings. Can I keep the cake? Keep my deposit on the hotel bank. There's a lovely cake I got, can I keep it? I dislike cake. You like Lost's ending and dislike cake. <laughs> you are literally the 1% of reasons, humanity. Man. You, you're saying that I'm the oddball, Mr. Laxley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, I'm perfectly normal. 
Okay. You know, you know how it is. <sighs> Can I clear up another thing? Go on. Because before we started doing this actual chat, we were doing a text thing, and you said to me that all I seem to do with Dead Space is complain about the gameplay, whereas actually, yeah. I've said several times that I'll be like, oh, I quite enjoy stomping on zombies, it's lots of yeah, fun. Like, you always seem to come up with some arbitrary way of giving it a backhanded, uh, what do you call it, insult. There you go. I think you meant backhanded compliment. No. Um, uh, no, no, you don't give backhanded compliments. Well, I'm giving a backhanded definition of a backhanded compliment. There you go. <laughs> you compliment it, but then you follow it up with a stab to the face. That's called that's called the criticism sandwich, actually. I liked this, yeah, but if I had cool. to find something to improve, I would give this. If you were a writer, Callum, my man... Shit, blah, blah, blah. It had a little good in it, blah, 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 but that is completely ruined by everything else. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this game is terrible. No, that's not remotely what I said. At that's all. pretty much every game that we've talked about, you've pretty much said. Could it be, here's an idea, just throwing it out there, could it be that you only remember the conversations where I seem to get annoyed by something, because the ones where I just yeah, say, this is a good game, I... If if I just said, this is a good game of which I have no real problems, there's no conversation to remember there. Whereas when I say, no, I enjoyed this... Happens, like, like, I think the last game that happened with was Dark Souls. Remind me. Ages ago. Oh, are you saying that's the last... Well, I have one that's major one of the, one problem. One only games that you, me and you both agree upon. Hmm. Although, you, you continually try to defend Dark Souls not having a pause button, and not for any, like, technical reason. Like, oh, they, they just couldn't... because it works! It's fair! <laughs> what? How is it if fair? If you have to go somewhere else, then Dark Souls is not going to make time for you. It is tonally consistent with the, like, just apathetic world of you Dark Souls. You have to be 100% committed to that game if you want to get anywhere. So it is kind of like the ultimate stereotypical gamer game where you must disavow all ties to reality and just devote yourself. Phone ringing, oh, can't do it, and beating those bloody the fat if dude and his skinny anyway, friend. Then yes. It just, it just literally stops me wanting to play the game because I know that this has happened. I've been like ten minutes, ten re ten minutes in Dark Souls feels like a lot longer. Up to the twins, yes. And then you just gave up. Well, it was just because it it felt like it was wasting my time. If I'm, it's not. I don't mind doing the boss over and over again. It's when it just interrupts Some excuses, me. Excuses, Kieran. It's it's just when it interrupts me. It's like, oh, you want to like pause and actually do something that isn't related to Dark Souls out of your control? No, you have to die. And I was so happy when I found that like trick you can do where you can like just if you like immediately quit out of the game and come back, you actually usually reappear where you were. But that doesn't work during boss fights for some reason. No, so you're cheating the system then. <laughs> oh how dare I want a pause play. button? How dare I want one of the most standard features of okay, games? You want an unfair advantage over what? your enemies. How is it an advantage? They, the enemies do not get interrupted. You're gathering your thoughts. You can do whatever you want. Oh. <laughs> and then just come back to it. And, you know, you could, pill, you could go into a boss fight, pull up a strategy or something. Okay. You own the boss. You wouldn't need to pause to look up a strategy guide. You lose, that, you lose that momentum. It seems more likely you look up a strategy guide after you've already died and after you try. At least that's from, guess, from my experience. But, you know... That's from my experience as a massive cheater, obviously, all those strategy guides I look up on a daily basis. All those strategy guides. I say that, I did, oh, in my... Whenever I come round your house, there's, there's always a stack, a stack of strats on, on the wall, just there. I, I will say it's true that in my, in my ignorant youth, I did actually, it must be one of the biggest scams in the world, pay money for us to beat your game for you in book form, you know, and even if the internet didn't exist where you could get this stuff for free, that would be a colossal scam. It just mm. seems like, what a childhood thing to think it's worth paying money in order to beat a game that kind of the point is for you to beat.
beat it. This is turning into a massive tangent. I was just having that thought. <laughs> Play the drinking game with for this video. Every time someone says, this has been a bit of a tangent, take a shot. Preferably vodka. Preferably. Although none for, none for Kieran. Are you saying it? I could have just recently overstepped my boundaries of vodka intake while recording? Is, is that what you're saying? I think so. I think that someone should have been paying a bit more attention to what they were doing instead of getting shit-faced. Dun Dungeons and Dragons and drinking, my friend, is one of the purest hobbies there is. <laughs> yeah, not when, like, your friends are pretty much dead and there's an angry sea monster trying to kill you all. You, you let the crack and hit the floor pretty effectively, if I recall, but... Uh... True, true. No way. If this video ever comes out, I doubt it will be before the DMD, so I guess we could spoil it openly. Oh, I don't, I don't think... I, I, like, but, 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 <laughs> my perpetual anyways, torment. This is, this is getting off topic. Did we have a topic? I don't know. Kieran? I don't know, man. We could even, like, end it here and start another conversation, because I'm in a talky mood now, you've got me going. Well, I suppose we could. Unless you actually have more to say about... Honestly, I doubt... We're coming from two different sides of a coin. I think I'm right, you think you're right. Who knows? We'll let, we'll let you decide. Yeah, you but... My, our point was to try and make arguments for our side, and... Other than a few examples, I'm not sure you did a great job. Oh, thanks. I don't think you did a fantastic job either. <laughs> I'm going to edit out all your good points of the video now. So, thanks. Yeah. Any time. Kill you. Hmm? Anytime you make a good point, I will replace it with the sound of puppies being murdered. You no. Know... That wouldn't surprise me, as you seem to always overlook my good points. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what's that? All I heard was puppies, what? You'll have to speak up. <sighs> Let's just face it, Kieran, we're never going to agree on this. No, I never did think, I just... I wanted to clear it up, because I'm pretty sure both of us were missing things in the text format of conversation. I, I thought that I was being perfectly clear, in fact I probably meant... <laughs> I probably put in better points than I have here oh, in the Karana. text. Why don't you find it and read it out if it bothers you that because much? Because we've been over them. Oh, I don't fine. want to go over them again. Um, I feel as this conversation is, is going nowhere, so... <laughs> What's cowardice. Cowardice. Games, eh? Let's just read books. Uh, you know, books, they have their moments. I read, I read a book with the... Oh, that's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> I read a book once. I liked it the pictures. And words. Some of them made sense. And then some of them were the plot to Dead Space 2. Oh. oh. <laughs> the low blow is this one. I just... like Dead Space 2. I like the Dead Space series. If you have a problem with them, then I shall meet you at the uh, Okay, I will, I will sum up my feelings of Dead Space 2 this way. Go on, man. I'm quite tempted to replay Dead Space 1, but I do not feel any great compulsion to replay Dead Space 2. It just felt like they it didn't take into... I mean... I didn't have any massive issues with Dead Space 1, but Dead Space 2 just felt like it didn't acknowledge my issues at all, and then going in a different direction now, I'd hoped they were. I mean, I didn't really think Dead Space 1 was so incredible or requiring of a sequel at all, but story-wise or gameplay-wise, it's not like Mirror's Edge, where I'm like, this is a great idea, I just wish they could try again and build upon it, where I'm like, Dead Space 1... The problem 1... with Mirror's Edge is it gets boring. Hang on. That's... Yes. <laughs> I'm having a rather long conversation and it is being recorded. Do you mind? <laughs> um. I take that as a yes. Anyway. Is that a hint we should probably stop? 
No, no, don't worry about it. I thought you were disturbing someone with your irrational rage at my clearly superior opinions. He no, said with a massive troll face. Wanted to ask me a conversation about the state of gaming and why I'm the best. Oh, okay. Fair enough then. I, I, I tell you what, what? We, can, we can talk about another topic. Oh, do you want this to be a different... I can put a big bazing and it's a different thing if you like. Yeah, go on. Go well, on. Uh, join us uh, next time, dear audience, <laughs> if you are so inclined. Say goodbye, Callum. Goodbye, Callum. You, sometimes the low blow is the least sweet also. I yeah. shall have my revenge. And Deathstalker too. Well, thank you for reminding me of Deathstalker too, unintentionally. Um, I live to please, ladies. I will be massively disappointed if the final boss of Borderlands 2 is not Handsome Jack riding Butt Stallion, okay? I want that so badly. And then the next video will just, won't actually have any game footage, it will just be a face cam of me screaming for several hours. That sounds good. O only we'll stopping doing, if... We'll oh. be doing a Shadow of the Colossus vid. Oh yeah, that's what it is. It's me playing Shadow of the Colossus, but you can't tell because there's no game footage and I never mention Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> I'm just screaming. Will there be any more Deus Ex? Uh, yes, I'm actually like rubbing that against my groin while playing Shadow of the Colossus. That's what screaming is uh -huh. about. Uh -huh. they're, not, they're not screams of horror. Uh, they're... <laughs>